After watching this, you'll master one of the best skin retouching techniques called frequency separation and get my tips and tricks. The best part, you won't need to memorize complex algorithms that I usually forgot on the next day. You'll be creating magazine quality photos, even if you're a total Photoshop newbie. For advanced users, the world of editing is changing. New tools are now more powerful than dusty actions. Frequency separation allows you to edit texture and tone with color separately. But what does frequency have to do with it? In modern scientific terms, frequency refers to the rate at which something occurs over a given period. In our case, this concept is applied spatially across a given image. Let me explain. I will select an area of skin in the photo and let's see what we find. The tiny details like skin texture and pores are present everywhere, all the time. These are the high frequencies. This is what that layer looks like. It contains only the texture. Spots and blemishes appear less frequently. These are the mid frequencies. It is what that mid layer looks like. And finally, what they see the least of, but what is no less important, is the color and tone, which create the visual volume. Here we have smooth shading transitions. These are the low frequencies. And that's the end of the theory. Before we start, grab your first pro tip. Clean your computer screen. I'm serious. Even the best software can't fight with the dust and smudges on your monitor. As for tools, it's okay if you don't have a graphics tablet. I don't have one either. That one isn't mine. It's too fancy expensive. But the computer mouse is a must. I got myself silent one. You can hear because it's silent. Okay, let's start. Look at this awesome image. Beautiful, young model, gorgeous makeup, perfect lighting. You might think this is the image I will be working on today, just like the other pros. Fake ones. Wrong. This is the image for today. Don't show it to retouches unless you want to see them cry. Look at this. Reminds me of the moon seen through telescope. Let's fix it. I'll copy the layer by pressing Command J. I'm going to call out all the hotkeys because if you want to get Pro in Photoshop, you need to learn to walk from the keyboard, just like Pro gamers. To split the image into three frequencies, I'm using the Retouch for Me Frequency Separation plugin. You can find the link in the description. It's 100% free. Why use a plugin when there are so many free actions out there? This free plugin allows you to actually see each frequency range. You can adjust the ranges on the fly and fine-tune them for your specific photo, just like tweaking the bass, mids and treble on your music player. I would recommend using the free band mode. This way you can easily control the skin's smoothness using the mid frequency layer. Now let's set the frequencies. I prefer to do this by looking at the high and low layers. S stands for solo. I'll click S here and now I see only the high frequency layer. Set the border until you can start seeing small blemishes, something like this. The low frequency layer contains the tone and color. Simply adjust the border until the blemishes disappear. The mid layer sits in between. In my experience, the value for the lower border is approximately three times higher than for the high one. The great thing about this plugin is that you can choose the filter for the borders. I'm using the median filter for the border between the low and mid layers. It takes some time, but this way I can keep the main facial contours sharp on the low frequency layer. Don't forget to tick the make layers box so you get separate layers for retouching. And done. See? No complex math. I'll select all the new layers and press Command G to group them. I'll name the group Retouch. I prefer to start with the low layer. Hold down the Option key and click the eye icon to make only this one layer visible. It's like the solo mode in the plugin. I'll be working with the mixer brush on this layer. To select the brushes from the keyboard, press B. There are four tools in the brush tool group. To switch between them, hold down the Shift key and keep pressing B until you choose the tool you need. There it is. Here are my custom settings for the tool. Just copy them. I call this mode wet rack. You should always keep your rack clean, so this square box should be empty. This option should also be turned off. If not, your rack will suck the paint from the image and become dirty. Let's zoom in. 
Hold down the Option key and draw the mouse wheel. Holding down the space bar with any tool active allows you to move across the image. Use the square brackets to make the brush smaller or larger. Your goal is to smooth out unwanted color transitions and spots on the low frequency layer. Pretend your image is a painting, so grab your wet rag and move it like this. In my opinion, working on the low layer is the hardest part of frequency separation because you can easily alter the subject's shape. Your clients will not appreciate that and it takes practice to avoid. My advice is to zoom out frequently and check if the overall shape has changed. If you are just starting out with this method, I recommend creating a copy of the low layer in case you make a mistake. This way you always have an opportunity to step back. Look at the spot, how to remove it. I click here and grab this color with my wet rag and blend it over the spot, just like that. Same thing with this spot. Don't forget to zoom out to check your work. Alright, I think I'm done here. Let's look at the before and after. Okay, now it looks more like Venus, not the moon. I'm just kidding, I have no idea what the Venus looks like. My telescope isn't that big. Let's move on to the high frequency layer. Make all layers visible except the mid layer. To see all imperfections clearly, I will create a brightness contrast adjustment layer. It sits at the top and affects all layers below it. Hold down the Option key and click between the new adjustment layer and the high layer to create a clipping mask. I'll tick the Use Legacy box and increase the contrast. Now we can see all the small imperfections clearly. Make the high layer active and select the Clone Stamp tool by pressing S. Make sure your stamp is as hard as a diamond with 100% hardness. The sample setting should be set to the current layer. Opacity equals 100. Hold down the Option key and click on the area from which you want to copy the texture. Then click on the pimple. Two tips. The first one. The size of the stamp should be slightly larger than the defect, so you can fix it in one click. The second tip, each time try to sample from a different area. This way you keep the skin looking natural. So basically, while working with the stamp, you'll be constantly using the square brackets and option key. Let's pluck some eyebrows, painlessly. Working on the high layer takes more time but much less brain power, so you can watch your favorite TV show with one eye, while the other one, along with your spinal cord, handles the rest. If you copy the texture from the wrong place, just press Command Z to undo. I accidentally pressed Command instead of Option and moved the high layer. Let's open the history panel and go back. All layers must remain perfectly aligned. Only you can decide how deep to go with your edit. You can remove blood vessels from the eyes, add some hairs, or clean out the nostrils. There are two things I hate the most, racism and black pores. The lips are as dry as the desert in summer. Let's make them soft again. Look at these pimples on the chin. Let's clean them up. Be patient, calm, and take your time. Manual retouching is so time consuming. But if you're curious whether there is a wormhole in this editing universe, my answer is yes, and we've created it. It's a constellation of AI plugins that work like a team of professional retouchers. All you need to do is choose the ones you need from the quick access panel and click the retouch button. They process your images locally on your computer with one-time payment and include free updates. You can even get the results as editable layers. Batch processing is also available. It's the professional workflow you enjoy and deserve. Find the link in the description. Or you can buy a silent mouse. So you don't disturb your family during sleepless nights retouching in front of your monitor. The choice is yours. Okay, I'm done. Here is what I got. Before, after. So what to do with the mid-frequency layer? 
I'll click on it and add a layer mask. Now you need to select the regular brush tool and set the color to the black here. Or you can simply press D to set the default colors black and white. Now I'll start masking out all of these small blemishes on the skin on the mid layer. The brush should be as soft as the puppy's belly. You can adjust the brush opacity here, but I recommend setting it from the keyboard. If I press 5, I get 50%. If I press 8, I get 80. Let's start with 90. I'll mask out all the blemishes on the skin. How cool is this? That's the power of the medium frequency layer, guys. This is exactly why I prefer the free band mode. Here are the results. Let's enhance the skin texture and details. I will turn on the brightness contrast layer, then click its mask, hold down option key and press delete to fill the mask with black. Now I'm selecting the brush tool. I need white as the color, so I press X to swap the foreground and the background colors in the palette. I will set the opacity to 100 by pressing 0 and click on the iris. Done. Then I'll set the opacity to 70 and paint over the eyebrows and eyelashes. What about the skin? For the skin I'll set it to 50. Important, I paint the skin in a single stroke without lifting my finger from the mouse. If you paint over the same area twice with 50% opacity, you'll get a 100% effect. There we go, compare before and after. Much better. Let's smooth out this transition here. If you need to locate where to smooth, just click on the layer icons while holding down the option key. Ok, the issue is on the low layer, so I will select my wet rag brush. Aha, uh -huh, it looks like the brush isn't clean. Let's clean it. Alright, now it looks perfect to me. What's next? Let's brighten the eyes. Select the low layer and then the brush tool. Sample the iris color by holding the option key and clicking on a bright area. Now let's make it brighter. I'll set the brush opacity to 10% and gently paint over the iris on the low layer. Perfect. Now, what about the skin color? I'm not the fan of the overall tone here, so I will add a color balance layer. I'll select mid-tones and add a bit of green and cyan. Here is the before and after this layer. If you still need to make local color corrections, create a new layer Change its blending mode to the color. Pick the desired skin tone, grab the brush at around 30% and paint over the problem areas. I've got a few artifacts left. See these areas? They're coming from the brightness contrast layer. All I need to do is paint over them with 100% black brush on the layer mask. Ok, I'm finally done. Look at this. It's crucial to preserve the personality. This is still the same person, but it's like you're seeing her through the mother's eye, where all you see is her beauty. Here is the before and after. I've left the neck and shoulders for you to practice on, along with the link to this image in the description. Theory without practice is useless. If you put in the work and effort, you can achieve anything. I believe in you.